Hello and welcome into episode nine of Looking Up with Laird. I am Andrew Laird. You can find me as Lairdino on Sober. Joined today by our two resident experts, Harry Trades and Sam Tai. Harry from the Harry Trades YouTube channel. Sam from Ranks FC. Gentlemen, we are back for another week. And Sam has already warned me about a tricky spelling of a name of his player that also included a little Sober Data trick that I... Didn't even know myself, so that's always fun. We have European football, kind of feels like it's mostly back. Obviously, there are a bunch of leagues that we're still waiting for, but I'm excited to see where you guys take us today, including Sam, who I, I don't actually want to give, give this away because I'm going to steal this. So obviously, we don't do this live. So if I end up with one of the four players that we discussed today, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Sam, why don't you actually just lead us off? Because I, I'm dying to hear why I should be going after this one player. Okay, well, I was actually going to give you the uh, opportunity to pick between my two players, but I think insofar as you've basically already picked. Let's just jam uh, in there. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about Frederick Rono of Union Berlin. Uh it's got a one of the lines for the O's in the first O. Uh, like in Pierre Emil Hoybier, which means that when you type it into so rare data, it doesn't come up. So I type N N O W to get to make sure that it comes up. But as you can, yeah, that that I mean, first of all, Led, please fix this. I mean, I know this isn't so rare data bug report, but please, <laughs> it's very much not that. You are correct. Please do this. Uh, but this is Frederick Orono, uh, goalkeeper. Big, big part of what was the best defence in the Bundesliga this season, even better than Bayern Munich's, for the first 12 games of the season. Wow. He, he then picked up a bit of a knock and he missed the final three games of the first half of the season, which the Germans call the Hinrunde, in case you didn't know. It's a nice little way of putting it. Uh, the first half is the Hinrunde and the second half is the Rookrunde. So they split it in two and have a word for each, which I really like. It's better than first half of the season. That's too many words. We get um, next to something similar as well. Yeah, like Klausur and, and Klausur. yeah, that's right. I like it. I like it a lot. So I'm going to start adding that into English language and just see where we go. Um, <laughs> but those three games that he missed, if you just flick onto his scores, uh, the, three, the three games that he missed for Union Berlin towards the end of the season, he obviously went to the World Cup and was back up to Kasper Schmeichel. They conceded 11 goals in the three games that he missed, wow. which is absolutely absurd. So first starting point here is there is no chance that the deputy is going to be breaking into this team. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he had his chance and he threw it a mile. Um, the deputy, for what it's worth, is an under-23 goalkeeper. is on loan from Bayer Leverkusen. So I'm sure that when... He got the nod here for the final few games. A lot of people on this platform were potentially very excited. 11 goals later, they're very deflated. Um, oh, anyway. I didn't realize it was uh, Lennart Grill. Lennart Grill. Yeah. yeah, so I'm sure that was, yeah, look at those scores. That's not good. So he's he's not a threat. Not at all. Uh, and we come back to Frederick Rono, who is fit again. He went to the World Cup as a backup. He's good to go from when German football returns, which is time of recording, about eight days away. I can't. I can't wait to have it back. Really, I need to. I need to start getting other parts of my gallery back in play. Um, but he was. He's. He's been really good. You know, his manager over the winter break has, has has affirmed that. Really, he's talked about how good Rono has been, how important he has been to the first half of the season. Union was so stout, so so stout when he was in goal, and his price has steadily come down off the back of that injury, particularly in rare. And it hasn't really gone back up again. In limited, it has, Ooh. I'll accept. But in rare, it hasn't. And I think this kind of leads us on to a bit of a, a discussion here about that. And it's, it's, it's the sort of discussion you never really want to be involved in because everyone hates buying rare goalkeepers. It's just like one of the worst ways you can spend money. Confirmed. But just taking a look at mm -hmm. an L15 like that, and that's a fair way to look at Rono because he only played 12 Bundesliga games this season before he got injured. Obviously, he had a bit of Europe mixed in. You look at the L15, 53, more or less, and you look at his price right now in rare. I don't think you can really find this anywhere else. I had, I had a quick look through on the player finder on so rare data. Cohen Castells from Wolfsburg is similar, but he's at least £100 more in on floor and about £300, uh, £250 more on recent trade value. Aitor Fernandez at Osasuna is 
uh, also kind of in this ballpark and cheaper, but he plays for a, a lower La Liga side. And if you really did want to find a, a kind of goalkeeper at this level, I think in champion Europe with that match his scores, you're looking at Leno, who is over a thousand pounds. Yeah. Allison, who was literally thousands more. And Wojciech Szczesny from Juventus, who was much more expensive as well. So I think there's a bit of a discrepancy here. And I guess I'm not surprised because he got injured, he got, you know, got injured at the end of the, the Hinrunda. And then obviously the, the L5 is depressed because of the World Cup. People have started to figure out in limited. People haven't necessarily figured it out in rare. And if he's anything close to those previous scores, this is great value, I think. <clears throat> so I've said this, I feel like on every show, but I'm going to say it again. I might as well just do it. Like this is exactly the type of player that the data doesn't push you towards. Because if you look like, obviously we know the Bundesliga has a p- pretty big break, which is coming to an end soon. But we, we kind of saw a lot of Bundesliga players tr- prices drop as they're, you know, heading into the world cup. Cause it was, everybody's like, Oh man, the Bundesliga break is so long. It's obviously not nearly as long as some other leagues. <clears throat> like the fact that Russia comes back in March is just <laughs> wild to me. It may as well be, well be 2024, but, <laughs> but then you look and you're like, Oh, he's got an L five of zero. He was replaced by an under 23 goalkeeper. Clearly they think that the U 23 goalie is the one of the future. And so they're going to stick with him. And I mean, if you look at the goals allowed, maybe, maybe you start to hesitate a little bit, but but yeah, this fits in exactly with why the show exists because there's more information than what the data shows. And so uh, when you can combine the data, which is like what we see in the previous scores. And what I really like seeing here is like the all around scores are really good. And when you have instances like this, your clean sheets turn into 70s and 80s instead of like 64s. And yeah. so that's actually one of the things that I look for first when I look for goalkeepers, which, as you mentioned, is like the worst part of this game, which is trying to buy rare goalkeepers. But like if you can find ones that, you know, do get clean sheets every so often, and then when they do, they really pay off. I mean, that's like exactly what you want in for cap mode players. who Like even with a 58 L15, if uh, they end up with a clean sheet, like you're looking at, probably, you know, 20 points over their L15, which is what you need to do in order to reach the 250 cap. So perfect yeah. player for that. I love also, it. he just, um, he played all the European games as well, except for the one that he got, I think, injured in. Um, he right. came off at half time uh, yes. after 45 against uh, Union saint was Yeah, so he played all the European games as well. So not only did, did he play all the Bundesliga games in that run, but he played... He played the Europa League games. They got out of their group. So he's actually got a couple of midweekers in February, um, which, you know, odds are he will play as well. He won't get rotated out. That's the other fear, isn't it? It is against Ajax. <laughs> so, you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, we'll see. But Uniona, they're actually the only team in Germany, by my reckoning, that bother to defend properly. And that's why he actually scores so well. So let's let's see how that goes. But there's a couple of extra games in there for you as well. Yeah, that's fun. For sure. For sure. Let's uh, get him onto the list. As a reminder for anyone who doesn't follow the Looking Up with Laird on So Rare TV watch list, you should go do it because everyone we talk about gets added as we record, not when the video goes. So you get a little step up on everyone who does watch the video. And you should definitely check this out because I'm surely I haven't checked the numbers recently, but I think there are just millions of people who watch these videos. And so there are going to be other people looking for these players. So it's better to get on them. Uh, oh, the Kevin Vimmer price chart was good last week, huh? <laughs> I mean, my gosh. Somebody clearly swept the floor here. Um, wow. Jesus. He really... And he's still pretty cheap. Like that's not just, just not very much money, but yes, yeah, somebody, somebody got a little bit busy. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we've still moved from, um, let's see, 75 cents last week and now $2 and I mean, from an ROI perspective, if you aren't watching this show, <laughs> my gosh, my gosh. Anyway, Mr. Trades, who else are we adding to our list this week? We're going to be adding a certain Amin Moufek, who plays for Saint-Étienne in the French League 2. 
Yeah. Do we know how to spell that one? A I A A I M. Sorry. A I M E N. That's enough. There he is. Um, yeah, somebody who I've known about for for far too many years now um, <laughs> from ple- from previous platforms. Somebody who you know attempted to break through in League One when Saint Etienne were there didn't really happen. Has had countless injuries over these last couple of years. I think his all time yeah dates back to like yeah game week ninety eight type of thing. So he, you know he's been around in and out of the teams, nowhere near. Um, the consistency you want from a Soria player. And I think the last two games is his first 90 minutes, uh, sorry, back-to-back 90 minutes um, in over two years. And yeah, so he's playing at like the heart of the St. Etienne midfield. They've, you know, just recently won a game for, (laughs) which is a bit of a shock to everyone. Um, Unbeaten in the last two. (laughs) Unbeaten in the last two, two goals scored, one conceded. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and he and he put up a twenty, nearly a twenty-three AA in the first, or in, in the most recent game, eleven point nine in the set in in the second one. Um, ridiculously cheap. Like he's not normally a player that I would really pick for this show. I normally like to go with players who are like you know I like knowing that there's going to be DAs come in and you know there, there's that sort of um, payoff in that sense. But this is a player that one I I know that can score pretty well just just by look like watching him play. Um, and, and sort of passing the eye test in that sense. And obviously, you know, this data to, to back that up, obviously on a very small sample scale, but he's just stupidly cheap. I don't, well, I think he could be something to look at if, you know, if we're looking forward to the to the cat mode, you know, very low L15 right now. I'm not yeah. sure if he's really going to like break into like anything stupidly higher to where he's just not viable for that. Um, but yeah, $4 for, for a limited, 50 bucks for a, a rare. I think he's going to go on a, a stretch of, of, of games, hopefully, you know, barring any injuries, to where, you know, there could be some sort of, um, yeah, some sort of reward in that. It feels like as long as he stays fit, you're fine. Yeah. Like, realistically, if we look at the last two matches and think somewhere in between that is where he should mm-hmm. be, let's call it yeah. 50. An L15 of 37 and... Plenty of DNPs to hold the L15 down for a little bit. Not to mention the sub appearances, which somehow we're going to start appreciating because it keeps <laughs> L15 as well. <laughs> but yeah, that's, I mean, it, it certainly seems to like check every box. It's one of those players. I mean, at least I imagine he just has cards from years There's ago. a lot of cards. Yeah. Um, like three seasons, four seasons. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Although no wonder, four I mean, worth, like, I mean, he, yes, he's well minted, but still only ten super res from four true. seasons worth. That's not well, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and realistically, like the first season they got to ten in the rares, mm-hmm. and the second season, oh, we got a little ML. Did he transfer to MLS and then come back? <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> let's see, fifty-five for the sec the next season. 48 so he, i mean not that we see a lot of cards get like fully minted anyway but like he's barely mm-hmm. halfway for most of these so it's like there are enough cards where like you're not overpaying to get them because they're so scarce but it's also they're just not that many so it seems yeah. like it could be a fun little differential for sure also and 2023 just, uh, until 25 so sorry sam but you yeah, know no, this no, utility there basically is is kind of what i'm Sort of alluding to, and you know, it's not just a, a one season thing. Don't get me wrong. If Saint Etienne go down, then there's trouble. Probably, you know, he might move. I, I can't, you know, I don't know. I can't foresee what what would happen with him. But he's a very talented centre mid, and yeah, I, I just think, I think there's there's value there. Yeah. So no need to apologise, Harry. It's your segment. Um, but <laughs> I just thought I'd say this. It's a weird. So this is how the mind works now. Led last couple of shows that we've been doing, you've immediately gone to like cat mode analysis where I can see where how your mind and your way of anal- analyzing these players is changing and mine is too when I'm looking at prices and what's really strange here is that for this player 56 pounds is the floor for a rare as I look at my phone right now I know exactly where you're that, going with this it's not very much money but the limited is too expensive for an L for an L15 of 36 which is not high but it's not zero and there's there's guys out there with zero 15 20 Honestly, I wouldn't pay more than two pounds for that limited, but I'd happily pay fifty six for that red. There's a discrepancy, the wrong way almost. 
I don't know. It's just weird how how I'm starting to look at these prices now with the cap mode in mind. Are you saying that as if like you don't want to waste 37 points of L15s in that sense? Like you'd rather buy somebody with like I, less L15? I think I can find someone with that takes up fewer cap points than 37 yeah. for less than four pounds. I think I can find that player for yeah. two for two pounds. That's not a criticism of the pick at all. I'm just just no, funny no, the way I'm looking. I'm just looking at yeah. the, the prices there and I'm like 56 for the red. That's pretty good. Four pounds for the limited. What a rip off. <laughs> <laughs> he's just so yeah, skewed funny. by his, <laughs> by his uh, Kevin Vimmer call that he's just like anything yeah. over two dollars is or yeah. two pounds is just absurd. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, funny, Harry. I was looking at the Sanity and team uh, last night because a player that I did consider but decided not to go for was Dennis Apaya, who was just mm. moved from Nantes to Sanity and he made his debut and he hit, I think originally it came in at about 80, but it's been opted all the way down to about 62. Still pretty yeah. damn good. Yeah. Played right back and seemingly played very well in his debut. Now, again, he's playing for the 20th place team, but I also found myself looking at the San Etienne lineup on So Red Data and going, oh, what's going on here? Maybe there's a little turnaround. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. New goalkeeper. Yeah, this, there might be a little resurgence of yeah. of them as a team because they should not be bottom of the French second. It's just absolute skit. Like, it's just un- no. like unbelievable, really. Yeah. So the thing that I thought Sam, where I thought Sam was going and he went the total opposite direction. <laughs> not total opposite. But like one threshold pays this card off. True. Yeah. And that true. not that like you can enter with just one card, obviously, but like <laughs> if you buy, if you had four and you need 37 cap and this one pays off, your $50 comes right back to you for the rare five bucks for the limited, which apparently is a complete ripoff at four. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder if, let's see. It's, okay. Maybe yeah. the floor not- is just. Well, the last one was five sixty four. Well, that's way yeah. over budget. The market seems to disagree <laughs> with you, Sam. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Uh, no, I think my 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 perception is is skewed and warped a little bit by looking at those Austrian and MLS cards, which are still the the low ones are still frozen down at the one pound two pound mark. Yeah. Um, we're talking Kevin Vimmer. We're talking Danny Wilson from Colorado Rapids. That kind of vibe. These are double, but obviously they're playing right now. So it's true. It's it's kind of obvious, really. That now I think about it, that that would be the case. I do wonder if we're going to start seeing maybe more content of people who are like players in different scarcities that cost less than the threshold to help you that like can help you win the threshold, like that pay for themselves. Mm-hmm. That like if you bought one of these cards and you yeah, win yeah. the five dollar limit, it's like oh he's paid for yeah true it is you're right though like if you are 37 points shy and you buy him and he gets you there you get your five dollars and then you sell him for one dollar less it doesn't matter because you, mm. he's, he's made you money like it's it's right. strange but it's the way it is yeah the from what i've seen from nba capped mode is going to make us do a lot of things that we are going to feel very stupid doing yeah <laughs> Like that's the nicest way I can put it, actually. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so love it. <laughs> There's going to be a point where you look at your gallery in like I'll say it's in like March or April, and you're just like, "Who are these guys? Like, why? <laughs> why are these guys in my gallery?" And you're just gonna be like, "Oh, cat mode. That's why." And that's all. Yeah. That's all. all right, Sam. Who we? Uh, who else are we adding to our list today? Okay, so. I'm going to go from goalkeeper to striker, complete opposite end of the pitch. And I'm going to go for Raul de Tomas. Are either of you familiar with the absolute farce that was Raul de Tomas's summer of 2022? Mm -hmm. Oh, good Lord. All right. Well, for the benefit of the audience and for Led, I'll uh, I'll recap it for you. Basically, in about June, once the the Nations League and and international games had, had been done, Raul de Tomas decided that he no longer wanted to play for Espanyol and reportedly effectively went on strike, held himself out of pre-season, demanded a transfer, just wanted to move. Given it was so early in the summer, Espanyol were like, okay, well, we'll sell you. Um, And they kind of put the terms up and and said, you know, he's up for sale. They bought 
a replacement by the name of Hosselu, who's been very effective, actually, in, in so rare. Uh, he scored quite a few goals. And they were kind of ready to move on from him. But they just couldn't really seem to get a deal done. And eventually, he did go to Rio Vallecano, who he now plays for. But they couldn't get the deal done until September the 13th, which was about 13 days after the transfer window shut. So he got marooned and couldn't play football from September to last week. All he has done is train. So he last played a game or something like, I don't know, he played for Spain in June, you know, and then that was kind of it. And now he's back because the window's open. So the registration window is open. And Raul de Tomas came off the bench last weekend and played 28 minutes against Real Betis. Understandably, just off the bench for now because the guy's a bit rusty. We've got to give him a chance. He hasn't played for five months and he missed the World Cup because of this. Like, this is how stupid this is. Um, but he's gone back to Rio, who a club he's played for before, a club he's scored for before, it, it, quite a handsome amount. Um, he's pretty much a verified bagsman. Like, his scoring record over the years is is pretty strong. This is a this is a very good number nine, and he he takes penalties. He's got a point to prove. He's 28. Call him 27 and a half physically because he hasn't done anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he should he should, uh, he should have some energy to burn. So Raúl de Tomás is, is kind of back in the game for the first time for you know half a year or so. He's capable of scoring very well. Again, if you want to go there, he's got that very depressed L15. But for for Raúl or RDT as he goes by on the back of his shirt and by uh, colloquial reference, RDT. R dot T R dot D dot T dot he puts he puts the full stops in as well. It's it's ridiculous. Um he's back and, and he's ready to go and like he's actually just not that expensive considering what he is capable of when he's up and running. I don't I don't know have any idea how to feel about this one. Like I it all makes Are you put sense. off by his antics. <laughs> it's less the antics than the time than the the result of the antics, like mm. taking that much time off just makes me think it's going to take a long time to get back because, and I say this as somebody who like had been burned by cards before that of players who, who was the one? It was a Fabrizio Angulari who, when he was at river plate was his contract was getting, was expiring in December of some year and he refused to extend it. And so they sat him from effectively May, you know, he didn't, he took the summer off and then didn't play the rest of his contract. And then he transferred in January and like, he's still barely playing. And so that's like the single example I have of a situation like this. Yeah. And I think RDT is probably in a much better situation in terms of being able to like actually get on the pitch and produce. But I always hesitate on guys that like, trained for six months yeah i mean that is that is very fair of course um i don't i don't know about the player that you're you're referencing as an example but uh raya Vallecano are not a rich team and they don't have a load of money to chuck around and waste and they spent eight million euros on this guy to come in and play for them uh he'll get he'll get he'll get every opportunity every single opportunity that they can possibly afford him to play his way into being worth that now that he's back uh, because they cannot afford to go, ah, I don't know, man. Maybe it's just not going to work out. Yeah, yeah. It's not a contract expiry. They spent money on him and they've had to wait for him for a long time. I know he's very good and you're right. He probably needs, maybe needs a little bit of time. I think if his price had like surged in this period, I wouldn't be sat here talking about it. But as you've got on the screen there, the rare has barely moved since it hit the bottom. And the limited has only moved a little bit. I mean, obviously, the best time to buy this guy would have been in September. But, like, you know, not everyone has, you know, money to just, like, sit on like that for, like, you know, three, four months. It's still not that bad. Um, so that's why I decided to, to chuck him in. Based on what I, what I know of him, the fact that he was playing for Spain in June, by the way, is a marker of his quality. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it, it's, it's, it's a big hint as to what he's capable of. Um, he might be a slightly questionable character at times, but <laughs> he's got an attitude. Strikers need an attitude sometimes. That's, that's, how yeah. they, that's how they roll. 
As somebody who has always had a soft spot for Mario Balotelli, I will be perfectly content with strikers <laughs> who are a little bit off, off up here. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. usually works better than it doesn't. No, I think it, it is interesting to see like how little the price has moved, certainly on the rare since September. Like he basically hasn't played. He's back, and nobody's taking notice. Maybe because he's going to be, uh, you know, or I don't even want to say he's being eased back in. It's been one game, but the where we've seen him. Yeah. If he can get anywhere close to where he was and there's nothing to say he couldn't be better then yeah, this price is a steal for where he was previously trading, you know, before he decided to do it on, before he went on strike. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, when you say it out loud, Laird, it just doesn't sound any better. I like the call though. And like I said, a little nuttiness is never a bad thing for me. Yeah, there you go. Actually, not even that many of his cards. Like looking at how many were, like 84 rares. Does he have new cards? Oh, maybe he does. Duh. I mean, he will he soon, I guess. He's got some, yeah, he's got oh. some this season Espanol, but I guess he's going to get new season Rio soon. I, I wouldn't guarantee it. Well, like, well, yeah, you might get them in April. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe there's a, a nice scarcity thing there. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah. Uh, those, those are always really tricky that like we all think they should come and then they don't. We're just like, oh, I guess they just didn't do it. <laughs> true, true. But I mean, say a player joins in January, they need time to get the photo shoot done on that. Yeah. Like this guy did his photo shoot four months ago. Like <laughs> they should, <laughs> they, they really should have this one ready. He's done nothing else. <laughs> right. Yeah. He had plenty of time to, to make sure he made the photo shoot. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Trades, when you finish this off today. Okay. So I'm going to stick with the striker theme and I'm going to take us down to Joshua Madger of Bordeaux rabbit hole. Um, Another player that feels like it's been around for years, still only 23, or actually 24 right now, um, I beg your pardon, with under 23 eligibility until this June. Somebody who, I mean, Sam will remember this season, I imagine better than you, Laird, but in, I think it was 18, 19 or 17, 18, was it for Sunderland in, the, in League One? I actually looked last night, I think he scored 15 goals and that was kind of his sort of breakthrough season, I guess. Um, you know, after that, it didn't really work out in the championship for him. I think he scored like six goals the following season um, and then ended up getting a move to Bordeaux and got loaned out. It, it's been a bit of a funny sort of ride, I guess, for him because he did really burst onto the scene, I thought, in that in that 17-18 season, I think it was. But regardless, he's back scoring goals and... Yeah, I'm just really enjoying these dark screen, uh, these dark green scores, to be honest. And for the price, I just think he should be worth a little bit more. Maybe not in limited, but certainly in rare. Um, a one week average of 0.288. I just, I don't know, with his AA scores as well that I'm seeing, like 20, nearly 25 AA in 68 minutes. It's kind of impressive. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah. Um, and then two goals this midweek, um, 10 AA in 70 minutes. It was a bit of a blip. He went five games without a DA. Um, before that, though, three goals in three games, scored a hat-trick in one goal, two assists. Like, he's not only scoring goals, he's getting assists as well. Bordeaux are a good team in League Two. Um, and I just think, I just don't, I don't know, Point two eight eight just seems a little cheap for me. First off, I like how you said that Harry remembers him as if I couldn't have watched Sunderland till I die and know that Josh. Okay, so okay, I completely forgot Sunderland. Yeah, okay. I that mean, that's the very, only reason very... I know who he is. <laughs> 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 okay, fair. Yeah, he was a big part of that, wasn't he? Yeah, that is true. He was. Yeah, yeah. Didn't he stiff yeah, arm for... Sunderland on deadline day? I think so. Yeah, something. Yeah, something happened. Yeah, sorry, Lil, I didn't. Yeah, forgot that. It's not for actually was watching good. football. It was actually just but, for watching. Yeah. Episode, but still, but, uh, what a great doc, though. By the way, it was really yeah. good. Really good. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, the it, it is kind of weird to see scores, that, and and this is what we see with like high AA forwards that like, like strikers tend to like 
you'll see these massive AA games and you're just like, oh, he's got some AA. And then you're like, oh, well, obviously like shots on target count and mm -hmm. maybe some attempted assists. So like it makes you think like, oh, maybe we got some set pieces here. And it's like, well, it's nope. really just like we're <laughs> just taking shots. Duels and they to be going on. Yeah. But like have a look, have a look at the 28th, 24 AA game. The um, this is what I am. Like he did lose a duel one and then <laughs> lost. Like I love that. Yeah. How crazy is that? Dominant. You never see that. Yeah. Um obviously attempted assists, I guess. Yeah, shots on target, of course. But even in the game before that, I think he had an um an interception. I I, I don't know, maybe uh, yeah. yeah, that was love and interception. Game, my game was after brilliant that. stuff. Got to love. Yeah, the three points is just as good as <laughs> it's unbelievable. Really, like three interceptions is basically a second DA. <laughs> 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 I mean, it is. It is. Yeah, it's a great way to look at it. Actually, I didn't. I Isn't never it, though, thought like, of it that way. But you're right. Like, yeah. Especially with like cards, I know Laird's a fan of these, but like the sort of forward cards that aren't forwards, like Jao Mario. I know you have. Um, who's the left back that you have the forward? Well, he's forward on forward card, but left back position in the area. No, in the uh, well, Merlin's yeah. one of them. He's the center back, left sided center back. No, who's the other one that plays in the area? Yeah, Walker Janssen's or whatever. Yeah, Janssen's. Uh, is it yet? Yeah, no, I'm on about somebody else. I, I, yeah, I know you have this guy. You have somebody else as well, Led. I'm sure you do. Super air forward. I'm going on. Oh, uh, Matt's Kohler. Yeah, he used to play left name. back. Yeah, yeah, that's him. Yeah, and if he still plays Johnny, left back, he joined the train the, uh, recently. Yeah, just straight that's up left what... back. But Quinn yeah, Merlin yeah. is also a great example. The Merlin's uh, a good shout. Things, yeah. things, are, so things are looking down for Quentin Merlin because he they came are. off injured. He came off injured last night, and he looked like he was in serious pain. Oh, so mm -hmm. that's the other show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't buy Quentin Merlin right now. He, he's one that like when I was still playing super rare and I was like, excuse me, I was still playing U23 and I was looking at Merlin's super rare and I was like, he's literally forward, but he always plays because he plays left back. He was taking sets like randomly. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, that's exactly a guy I want. And then I was like, yeah. I'm going against Mbappe with that guy. So I'm just going to stop playing U23. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yes. Um, the only uh, issue with guys like this Mm -hmm. and it, this is going to bring me back to cat mode is they're basically scored like Jansen's is yeah. probably the, actually, I wonder if uh, Matt's here is the same way. So he's got an L 15 of 60. Actually, this probably works in his. Yeah. So as if he was a defender, which like that's where he plays, it should be 67, but it's actually Jansen's is the one that is bad because he his L15 is higher as a defender and he has defender mm -hmm. cards. So he's Got treated you. as a defender. So he has a 56 L15 as a defender, but his L15 as a forward 50. So he's actually like the opposite of what you want for cat mode, which is <laughs> yeah. sad for Laird. That's all. But anyway, <laughs> we're not here to talk about him. We're here to talk about young Josh Maja here. Um, where was this price? Like, has he ever been like, oh, wow. Whoa. Mm, he went on that heater. It must have been like around the, the hat trick, then the three goals in October three games. And that, I bet it's exactly. Is that, does that correlate pretty well? Yeah, right after. Goals in three straight. Okay. Yeah. He had the 100. What is that? Two September. I mean, that's just what the market does, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the thing with you get an under twenty three forward, you get a little hot streak like that, and you just like <sighs> mm -hmm. if you're if you bought if you bought to sell, you are just rubbing your hands, aren't you? Yep. Look at that. Definitely. Lord. Only two super rares. Is kind Harry's of got both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel like a card that we would look up. Oh yeah, there's Harry trades. <laughs> Do you have one, Harry? I don't, mate. No, um, mainly probably because of the age in that sense. Like, I'm not. He's already too I'm not old. as I'm not as ageist right now as I was before cat mode because I just think, especially like with goalkeepers, like if they're 24 now, I'm happy just like Gaten Cook, whoever, however you pronounce it for uh, Mikulan in the Belgium league. Like, I don't mind using him for like super rare cat mode after he's not eligible for under 23s type of thing. Like, I'm not as like in a rush to get rid of my 24 year olds. 
um, yeah. where I was probably before cat mode. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I wouldn't go out and buy him right now because I'd probably look for somebody with a little bit more utility. Um, but for the like for the price, I I don't know. I, I he could go on another another heat turn. We could see um, another selling opportunity in in a few games after he's scored a few. I see no Pender scored last night, guys. I did let you know in the chat. But um, yes. Pen, pen 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 score. Is that, was he the player that you promised five decisives in a month? He was three. He was no, three, he I was think. Not three. He was five. Maduake, One of Maduake was... was five. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. So on, yeah. on the subject of Maduake, <laughs> did, did, you, did you enjoy the fact that he played, um, was it Sparta? Uh, and scored. <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't score in the league and then played them in the yeah, cup. Yes. Yeah, yes. against them. <laughs> I, saw I knew that, that was, thought of that you was always going to happen. <laughs> knew it. Absolutely love it. I was like, people aren't going to give me credit for this. I'm not going to get credit for this one. <laughs> I'll throw it to you if he gets four in the next four. So I'll okay, happily okay. take the uh, the cup. <laughs> but yeah, the Openda call is looking pretty pretty tasty at this point with some nice uh, matchups in the next two. Yeah, just, uh, next. yeah, just keep an eye on those transfer rumors because you know some daft Premier League club is going to panic, see that he's well yeah. fast and go, 30 million? <laughs> Uh, and take it, take it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just keep an eye on it, <laughs> yeah, no, that's true, very true. So, as a reminder, Openda was added to the Sora data, uh, looking up with Laird watch list here last week. If you are using the list, you can go to the notes and you can see when we added everyone, just to give you kind of an idea of when we uh, started talking about these players and it helps you understand like why they went on a hot streak because we talked about them and that's just what players do after we talk about them as we <laughs> see here with Lois Appenda. So uh, definitely uh, make sure you subscribe to that uh, watch list by hitting the uh, heart button on the list. So I think that's all we have for today. Gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, those new names that we have on our list. We'll be back next week with another episode. If you guys have not subscribed, somehow watching this video and have not subscribed to So Rare TV, please do so so that you can be notified when the new videos come out. There's going to be a whole lot of more, a whole lot, a whole lot more, a whole lot more content, more of content. Yeah. Man, <laughs> more of this, this is bad content right now. But there will be more <laughs> content coming out from So Rare TV, including uh, a weekly MLS show, Major League So Rare, which I'm really excited about because uh, I'm hoping that they just start pumping some of the bags that I have from, from MLS. <laughs> honestly. Yeah. That's all. But yeah, thank you for joining us and we will talk to you next week.